Stacked is launching a portal for new launches with exclusive 3D tours and Lento Modern will be our first featured project. More details in the description box below. Hey guys, we're in Dutch here. So apparently we Singaporeans really love our mixed-use developments and this could be seen from the uptake of Midtown Modern, Piccadilly Grand and Passeries 8, all of which sold really, really well. So today we are at Lentor Hill and we're going to be checking out Lentor Modern, uh, yet another mixed-use development. Now there's a lot of anticipation and hype for this project, mainly because there hasn't been a new project here for over 15 years. So I'm really excited to check this place out. If you guys are ready, let's get this show on the road. So before we begin with the development model, allow me to share a little bit more about this development with you guys. Now this is located at One Lento Drive and is a 99 year lease condo in District 26. Now this is a mixed use development so that means you're going to get the residential and the commercial spaces and a TOP is in 2026. Now you've got a total of 605 units here spread across three 25-storey blocks. You've got one to four bedroom units here ranging from 527 square feet to 1,528 square feet. Now out of these units, 51% of them are three and four bedroom units, meaning that the development caters more to families as a whole. And the developer of this project is Guacoland. Now they've had plenty of experiences with integrative developments in the past, including Warwick Residence, Midtown Bay and Midtown Morden. Now we've actually done videos to all these project so feel free to check that in the playlist and now that we've got all the juicy bits out of the way it's time to have a look at the development model. Overall, this mixed-use development is known as Lentor Central and the residential end is known as Lentor Modern. Now, it's going to be sitting on a total land size of 186,000 square feet and it is the first land plot that's been launched in this area, certainly the only integrated development. So buyers have the first mover's advantage. Now, the first two levels here are dedicated to over 96,000 square feet of retail space and it is here that residents get direct access to amenities like F&B outlets, retail shops, 10,000 square feet of childcare space and a 12,000 square feet lot featuring a supermarket. Now, right above the commercial podium, we've got these three residential blocks right here. And as you can tell, they're very much like recent Guacoland developments in the sense that you've got a sleek and timeless facade finished primarily in grey with floor to ceiling windows. Now notice how all three blocks are strung out in a row and faced apart so that units are not overlooking each other. Now in terms of views, they've also tried to optimize the landed areas in this space so the north by northwest views are essentially overlooking the lower Silita Reservoir and the south by southwest views over Upper Pierce Reservoir. And it's right here that you'll find all the facilities and as you can tell, it's been really well landscaped with over 150 species of plants and greenery. It certainly looks like it's taken lead for Midtown Morden. So right here we've got a tennis court and it's nice that the developers have managed to fit at least one court into this development. Moving on, we've got a 200 meter long body of water that resembles the Lentor stream that once flowed through this entire site. So on this end, you've got a 50 meter lap pool followed by a 25 meter lap pool, a jacuzzi alcove, a leisure pool and and a spa pool. Now on either end, you also have the Grand Clubhouse and the Barbecue Pavilion. Alright, so just coming around to the other end of the development, this is Lentor Drive and it leads into the arrival hall of Lentor Modern. Now it's also here that you notice the different lawns in between the residential blocks. Now, I know some people might find this a waste of space, but personally for me, it's a luxury to have this space to look on. Now it's also here that you notice the different cabanas just around there, uh, which really serve multiple purposes for residents over here. Now in each of the residential blocks, we also have double volume sky terraces which features gardens, lounges and much more. Now this definitely serves as an extension of facilities from the ground floor with a different view altogether. So I wasn't able to cover all the facilities here but if you're interested, you can check out the link in the description box below and with that, allow me to share more amenities with regards to Lento Modern. The residents of Lantau Modern will have plenty to look forward to in terms of achieving a fulfilling lifestyle. So apart from the mall directly below the residence, other shopping and eating establishments can be found at Amokyo Hub and the neighbouring malls within that vicinity, Thompson Plaza and the Upper Thompson Eateries, which are only three MRT stops away. And further down, you have access to Bishan North Shopping Mall, which is under 11 minutes drive away. Now, Lantau Modern is also within reach of various leisure and recreational venues. Within the estate, you have the upcoming Hillock and Linear Parks, while Lower Pierce Reservoir Park and Thompson Nature Park are both under 5 minutes cycle away. 
With regards to public transport, this has to be one of the main selling points of Lento Modern. As mentioned earlier, the Lento MRT station is within the development itself and it connects you to important MRT lines such as Cross Island, Circle, Downtown and North South Line, all under 9 stops away. Now for those who drive, you get a network of expressways which serve this area including the CTE, SLE and the upcoming North-South Corridor which is currently under construction. As for parents with kids, you are surrounded by educational institutions catering to the different schooling levels including Anderson Primary School, CHIJ St. Nicholas Girls School, Presbyterian High School, Anderson Junior College and Nanyang Polytechnic. So now that we're more familiar with this development, it's time to have a look at the show unit. Now this is our first show unit and it's a two bedroom, two bath and it comes with a flex room. Now all two, three and four bedroom units here all have flex rooms of their own and they're able to accommodate a single bed. Now in terms of size, this is 732 square feet and it's finished in a dumbbell layout. If you guys are ready, let's begin at the entrance. Coming into the unit through the entrance, you're going to see the DB box on the left together with a low-level shoe rack. And transitioning into the kitchen, we find that it's a U-shaped layout. Uh, you've got bottom and top storages. You've got a touring induction hob right here with a hood and an oven right below that. You've also got a fridge on this end and right opposite, you've got a washer come dryer. Now all appliances here are by Smack. And finally, at the end of the kitchen, we have a single bowl sink together with a kitchen faucet that's by Hans Groher. And above that, we have the drying rack, which is actually nicely concealed behind this overhung cabinet right here. Finally, we also have a sliding window on the backsplash, which as always allows for natural light and ventilation into this space. Now as we come over this corner right here, notice that the kitchen cabinet actually continues into the flex room, essentially serving as an extension of the kitchen. Right now it's being used as a dry kitchen, so you notice that there's enough shelving space, countertop areas, uh, racks and even lower space storage. There's also a window right here, so once again, if you wish, this flex room could be used for multiple purposes, essentially suiting it to your needs and lifestyle. Now right next to the flex room, we have the common buff. So you notice that both the flooring and the walls are finished in light grey marble tiles. And this is consistent throughout all the baths in the unit. You notice there's quite a bit of width. You've also got quite a bit of counter and storage space. And finally, of course, we have a window right here for ventilation and natural light. And right opposite the bath, we have the dining area. So currently we have a five-seater dining set. On that end, we've got banquet sitting, which helps to optimize space. And it's also right here that you notice the ceiling height of 2.845 meters. Now making your way into the living room, you notice that it's a good width and length and you've got ample space between the TV console and the sofa set. Now right here we have a three-seater sofa together with a coffee table with ample legroom coming in and out from the balcony. Now it's also here that you notice how a high ceiling really helps to accentuate the space. So out through the glass sliding doors onto the balcony, the, this space comes in at almost 50 square feet, so it's certainly very sizable. Uh, it's currently being used as a pet play area, but I can easily see a compact alfresco dining set fitting into this space. So now that we've seen most of the common areas, let's head into the bedrooms. Alright, so heading into common bedroom one, you notice that it's timber flooring and this is the same for all the bedrooms in all the units. Right here, we've got a custom bunk bed with enough headspace for the top occupant. I can easily see a double bed fitting into this space. Now over on that end, we notice half windows and that's because the AC ledge is just right outside. And over here on this end, we've got a floor to ceiling double panel wardrobe which is provided by the developer. Now having a dumbbell layout is great as it offers privacy to both bedrooms. Now heading into the master bedroom, you notice that you've got a king size bed with ample bedside space for bedside furnishings. And right here we've got a full length floor to ceiling window. And on that end we've got a two panel wardrobe. And of course we've got a ensuite master bath and this is finished similarly in light grey marble tiles both for the flooring and the walls. Now it's definitely bigger than the common bath we saw earlier uh, with plenty of vanity top space and a rain shower. Now the only difference here as well is that you don't have a window so it's mechanically ventilated. Alright, so now that we've seen this unit, it's time to have a look at the three better.
So this is the three bedroom unit. So some specs very briefly, we've got 1,109 square feet of space, three bedrooms, one flex room and two baths. Now I'm currently standing in the middle of the common area. Down the corridor right there are the bedrooms, but let's begin at the entrance. So coming in through the main door, we have this entryway right here. Now to my right, you get a three panel cabinet, which includes both the DB box and enough storage for your shoes. Now moving on into the kitchen, you notice that it's separated from the main area by this pocket sliding door right here. And it's finished in a galley layout. Now there's a lot of space between both counters. And I could see about two to three people working here at any one time. So overall, we notice there's tons of countertop space and storage all around. One thing that might catch your eye is that unlike the two bedroom, we actually have a three burner gas hob. Now coming back through the kitchen, you notice the bomb shelter is right here as well and that could serve different purposes. You can use it as a maid's room or even storage space. Even further back into the kitchen, we have the utility yard. So on one end, you have space for a washer dryer and on the other end, space for a WC. So heading out into the dining areas, you currently see a six-seater dining set, which is really suitable for a unit of this size. And on into the living area, again, you notice the amount of space you have right here. It currently sits a three-seater sofa, but I could see some side tables and perhaps even an armchair fitting into this space. Heading out onto the balcony, this comes at almost 65 square feet, which makes it a decent outdoor space. Uh, right here, we have a compact alcove high sitting chair. Uh, and over here on this end, we have a simple exercise area. Heading into the bedrooms right now. Now what's interesting about this corridor is really the flooring. So notice how it's actually in timber flooring coming out of the bedrooms. Now this is the first time I'm seeing it. Usually you get flooring from the common area flooring in through here. But in my opinion, I kind of like it. It does serve as a seamless transition of sorts and it also helps to clearly demarcate both the living from the bedroom areas. So heading into the first common bedroom of this unit, now this bedroom comes in at about 93 square feet. Uh, notice the AC ledges are closer to the master bedroom, so you get full length windows right here. And on that end, you get a two panel wardrobe. Heading into the second common bedroom, this is finished in a similar layout. The only difference is that they fitted a single bed here together with a compact study table. And right opposite is the common bath, but what I want to show you is this flex room right here. Now it's currently finished as a study slash work area, and you can see how there are two work consoles set next to each other. All right, so finally heading into the master bedroom, we've got the master bath over there. The only difference with the two better being that you actually have a window in that bath. Now come on in, uh, we've got a king size bed right here with enough space on either end, firstly for a bedside table and a vanity right there. Now that's all for this lovely tree better unit. Now let's head into the final unit today, the four better. And so this is the four bedroom unit. It comes in at 1,528 square feet. We've got four bedrooms, three baths, a flex room, and a dry and a wet kitchen. Now on my right, we have the junior master. And on my left, we've got a corridor leading to all the bedrooms. As always, let's begin with the entryway. Now coming through the front door is the same scenario. You've got your entryway together with your three panel cabinet with the DB box and shoe storage in there. And over here on this end, you've got enough space for perhaps a stool or a console table. So we have both a dry and a wet kitchen. We begin with the dry kitchen. So you can see there's an L-shaped peninsula right here um, with under counter storages right on this end. And on the other end, you've got space for two bar stools. Now this is going to come in handy if you want to have a quick meal or if you host guests often. Now through this pocket sliding door is the wet kitchen. So come on in. It's finished in an L-shaped layout. So you've got plenty of storage space again below and above the counter. You've got enough countertop space as well. And you notice that there's a glass panel that stretches all the way to the entryway. Finally, note that there's also a ceiling mount drying rack. Now appliances wise, we have a double door French fridge right here and a three burner gas hob on this end. We also have an inbuilt oven. And if you come with me through the kitchen, you notice the utility yard right here with enough space for a washer dryer. We have the bomb shelter, which is currently being decorated as the maid's room with a Murphy bed, which as always helps to maximize space use. And with that, let's head back into the living areas. Apart from the dry kitchen, we also have the pantry. And right now you can see that it houses a wine fridge and a double door glass storage right here. Now above, we also have display shelves for both liquor storage and liquor display. 
So right here is the dining area. You currently see a eight-seater dining set. Now this is great for a big household or perhaps if you host often. Now adjacent to this is the living area. And again, you can see it's pretty spacious. It currently sits a four-seater sofa, but you could perhaps add in a couple more armchairs and even side tables if you so wish. So heading up onto the balcony, you know, the balcony spans the entire width of both the dining and living areas and it comes in at 130 square feet. So definitely a good extension of outdoor space. Now right here, we've got a four-seater fresco dining and on this end, you've got enough space all the way down through the perimeter for more console tables. Separated from all the other bedrooms is this junior master bedroom right here. So coming in, you notice that there's a king size bed right here. It's a little bit smaller than the previous master we saw in the three bedroom unit, but you've got ample space on either end for bedside tables. Notice that this is an ensuite, so it comes with a bathroom of its own as well. Now right opposite the junior master bedroom, we have this corridor right here which leads to all the other bedrooms. Now on my left, we have the first common bedroom which is quite similar to what we've seen earlier. But what I want to show you is this bathroom. So this is a Jack and a Jill and it leads on to the second common bedroom. As you can tell, this is finished in a futuristic style, so almost like a gamer's room if you will. Now currently it sits a single bed, but I could easily see a double or even a queen size bed fitting into this space. Now one final thing to add as well is that we have full length windows throughout all the bedrooms in this unit. So we're now heading into the flex room and the flex room in this unit has been converted into a walk-in wardrobe. Here you've got the wardrobes and on the end you've got the vanity table. I also like how they've put mirrors throughout this space so it helps to visually enhance this area making it brighter and a little bit bigger as well. Now one thing that's nice about having a walk-in wardrobe is that you don't necessarily have to carve in a wardrobe of your own into the master bedroom. So we've seen this space converted into a walk-in wardrobe, we've seen a pantry, and we've even seen a study area. So what would you guys convert this space into? Personally, I might just change this into a library. Finally, heading into the master bedroom. So this is a little bit bigger than the master bedroom we saw in the previous tree better unit. Again, you've got a king size bed here with plenty of space on either end for bedside tables, full length windows, and an additional two panel wardrobe right there. Right next to it is your ensuite bath. Again, this comes with a window of its own. All right, so we've officially wrapped up the tour for today. Uh, allow me to share a couple of pointers about this development with you guys. This is the first land plot to be sold off in this estate and it is the only integrated development in the area. Now this does give buyers a first mover's advantage, but do bear in mind that you're going to get quite a bit of construction as the other land plots are further sold off down the road and redeveloped. Secondly, Guaco Land has also purchased another land parcel in this Lentor Hill area. Now this ensures that they have more presence in this space and if it's anything to go by, they have had a good track record in redeveloping an area as you can see in Midtown Warden and Midtown Bay. Essentially, the more land parcels a developer owns, the better hold they have on pricing power. Thirdly, the commercial units here will be managed by Guaco Land and it's not strata owned which ensures that there's usually a better curation of retail tenants. And finally, apart from the retail options, having the Lantor MRT station right in the development itself ensures good public transport for the residents here to places like the Woodlands Regional Centre, CBD and other key areas in Singapore. And overall, for those who are interested in the unit mix, we have it right here together with the accompanying details. Now you've got one, two, three and four bedroom units ranging from 527 square feet to 8,528 square feet. And as always, if you want to find out more about this project, you can check out the link in the description box below. And as always, thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Do consider liking, subscribing and turning on that notification bell. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.